and welcome to another episode of YummyCast, a video game podcast now on Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes. Thank you once again for coming around. It's a uh, it's been an interesting week uh, after the uh, YummyCast number 30 was released. We had a lot of interesting things develop in the Mortal Kombat world and also in the gaming world as well. We have some Madden news. Oh boy, Bloodborne news. Fortnite and uh, uh, the sales. A lot of a lot of sales figures for Nintendo has also risen up so i'm going to talk about that stuff but first i need to bitch i need to bitch and complain about mortal kombat 11 and i'm a little disappointed i'm a little disappointed in the game um i will put a spoiler tag in probably right around here somewhere uh so if you want to you can mute the video and or skip ahead in the video for um for audio listeners, uh, I'll just have to say spoiler alert before we uh, we continue. But I'm really disappointed with with Mortal Kombat 11, and this isn't a spoiler. This is not a spoiler. But the one thing that really annoyed me about Mortal Kombat X, even though it's a it's a fine game, I, I didn't mind it. I actually liked the campaign in that one. The one thing that really bugged me though was the fact that there were non-playable characters that you fought during the campaign, and they were kind of fleshed out. They weren't fleshed out entirely, but they had X-ray moves, they had basic moves, they had special moves. Pretty much a character. Uh, there was characters like Baraka, Sindel, Tanya, Rain. These characters all were in the Mortal Kombat X campaign. Maybe you fought them once, twice. Who cares? They were in the campaign, and they they were coded. They the AI played as them, you couldn't play that as them unless you were on a modded PC. And even then, you had to actually eliminate one character from your roster to put that character in, in that place. So, kind of strange to me, um, I, probably strange to everyone else too, and a lot of people complained about that, a lot of people bitched about that. Now, we'll move on to Mortal Kombat 11. As you know, Cyrax and Sector were in the trailer for the campaign, so it's not a spoiler right now, but you fight them in the campaign. Uh, Cyrex is in there once, Sector is in there about three to four times, I think. I think three times. I think three times. Um, and this made me think that Sector was in the game, that you could play him as a character, and I missed him for whatever reason. So I went to the character roster, and what do you know? He's not on the list. Neither is Cyrax, neither is Kronika who is the main antagonist of, of the of the game. So this really got me into a tizzy because it's not like it's kinda of, you know, Shao Kahn's in the game in the campaign as well. You fight him like twice or so, and he's a DLC character. Um day one DLC, which, you know, of course no one likes, but it, it is what it is. This is like the first DLC character who was in the campaign. Uh, that was day one DLC. Kind of like how Brainiac, you have to play through the entire game in Injustice 2 to unlock him. Kind of like in Mortal Kombat X, to get Shinnok, you had to play through the entire game on that one. This one, if you play through the entire game, you get the character Frost. And you get her in Chapter 4, and that's the only character that you unlock just by playing through the campaign itself. I was expecting to unlock, like, Sector and Kronika at the end of the game, but nope. Kronika is um, the end boss for the towers and for the campaign itself. You fight her once, but she is very difficult. Uh, she's probably the one of the hardest bosses that I've had to face so far. Um, even though she, even though Brainiac is annoying, I think she has more of those moves that just will annoy you the hell. And usually, what happens is you unlock the end boss for as a playable character. But in this one, you can't. You can play as Centurion, but not as Kronika. Um, which isn't as bad, because I don't, like, I didn't like the character anyways, I thought she was kind of a weird character, but the one thing that really got me is not being able to play as Cyrax or Sector. Those are the two characters that I wanted to play as in this game, because we missed them in X, and in 9, I really enjoyed, uh, Sector's moves. Um, and what do you know, in that, in the X, we got the Triborg, which was a DLC fighter, it just didn't, it's just not it's just not the same. It's a combination of all of like three different characters: Sub Zero, Cyber Sub Zero, um, Cyrax, and, and Sector. I don't I don't I didn't want that. I want them their own physical characters. And seeing as you fight Sector so many times in the campaign, I thought that he would actually be on the lot on the roster. Give him something. Don't make another Triborg, please. I don't want Triborg. I want a Cyrax or a Sector character in the game. 
not many people are talking about this right now. Not many people are 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 actually angry about this right now. I seem to be the only one who has has even mentioned it in my realm of of people that I know. And this is weird to me because everyone was up in arms about X not having all those characters in X. Well, in this one, there's a good slew of characters who aren't in this one. And like I said, the, the big nail in the coffin is you you fight against Sector like three times in the campaign. It's not like you fight against him once, he's a one-off character, and he's gone like Cyrax. This one, you actually he's actually a major point in the campaign, so why wouldn't you put him in the game? Why? I don't want him to be DLC. Yes, I have the fighter pass, but I... It's just not fair to people. It's not fair. Uh, it's it's almost not as fair as the loot boxes in the game. <laughs> oh, boy. So, okay, so spoiler alerts. There's some other gripes I have with the campaign. So spoilers from here on out. Put the... Yemi, put the thing in the corner. Um, one of the big things that 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 made me kind of scratch my head about in this campaign is... The evil version of Raiden literally gets knocked out after the first campaign. Like, he dis he's disappeared, he's gone from existence because of the whole time warp thing. And I was really hoping that he would be a major player in the campaign, but he's out after the first part. Which really annoyed me. Uh, I was, because I was, like, Raiden's never been evil during a campaign, I don't think. And it's, 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 it's interesting to see him be a little bit more evil... And, and do things that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't see a normal Raiden do. So that was one thing that really bugged me. And then another thing is, um, the end of the game pretty much eliminates everything that happened during the campaign. I don't want to give away too much if you haven't played it yet and you're still listening. Um, but the end of the game essentially wipes out everything that happened in this, in this game, in the last game, and the games before that. So who knows where they're going to go with 12? Uh, it, it, it might be another reboot. It, who knows? Another thing that uh, also bugged me about the game is there's a lot of Revenant characters who just don't show up. And I know in the last game they, they showed up and, you know, they didn't really do anything, but they, you could have done the same thing in this one. Netherrealm is so empty. There's only Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Katana, Jade, and, um, Cy not Cyrax, Tch, fuck me, Cabal. Cabal, those are the only Revenants that show up in the game. They're the only characters that are Revenants in the game. Even though Striker, Sindel... Um, there's also Nightwolf, they're all Revenants too, where are they? <laughs> like, they're nowhere to be found, and it's really annoying, because those are big, like, uh, Strikers not, but Sindel and, and Nightwolf are two big player characters in this, in this universe that they've created. So I don't know why they wouldn't show up, or even be there to help in, in this fight. Uh, like I said, there's really, in the, in the last episode, I said that there's, like, literally two Revenants on the screen at a time, during the, pretty much the whole campaign, and it's really, really weird. Um, another thing, uh, big spoiler here, Devora uh, kills off a major character, again, Every, she killed off Melina in the last one, and Baraka in the last game, and in this one, they, they decided to let this, this new stupid character kill off uh, the old version of Scorpion, and I was like, why? <laughs> why? 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 Why not just have someone else do it, other than Devora? I do not understand. Oh, boy. That was a big letdown, too. Um, and then... They're really... Like, the other major deaths in the game were fine. I thought that uh, the way they took out uh, Kano was was pretty cool. But like I said, none of it really matters anymore because the timeline is going to practically be rebuilt from the ground up. So we'll see what happens there. I'm, I'm glad that they didn't use Baraka as a punching bag in this game. He's actually, like, a legitimate character who actually grows as a character during the campaign um shiva makes an appearance during the campaign but you don't fight her she's not playable or anything like that she's probably going to be dlc because they've definitely made her character design a little bit more aesthetically pleasing um i felt like they used aaron black as the punching bag in this one now i will say this aaron black actually uses his guns in the cutscene it's not like the last game where he runs at you with dual pistols equipped but then he slides into you <laughs> You know, he doesn't shoot a single bullet. He doesn't kill anyone. Like, he ha he could kill Rain in the last game. He could have killed Rain in the last game, but instead, he pointed his gun at him and waited for someone, something to hit his hand. It was quite stupid. Also, uh, I'm still not a fan of Kotokan. Kotokan has his own chapter, once again. I hate it. I hate using his character. His character's lame. <laughs> they tried to make him cooler. It just didn't work. Nothing works. 
He's an asshole. No one cares about him. Uh, I, I still like the whole time warp thing where the new characters are meeting the old characters. There's some nice little conflicts that arise from those kind of things. The other thing that I, I noticed on the same lines as Aaron Black being a punching bag, um, the young version of Kano is also a punching bag. You, you never fight old man Kano. You only fight young Kano in this game, which makes no sense to me. <laughs> they, they could have easily swapped them out, and, and it would have been fine. I do like how you can choose which character you want to fight as for some campaigns. Some, you know, there's a Sub-Zero and Scorpion campaign, and there's a Jackson Jackie Briggs campaign uh, chapter. So it's cool that you can use two different characters and, and you know, fight with the one that you're, you're, you like more. Um, usually when I see those things, I just go with the one that seems the most right correct i don't know how to say it like in injustice 2 you could tell which character they wanted you to fight as this one kind of the same thing um yeah so other than that uh yeah i'm just a little disappointed with the whole with the whole experience um right now i'm still playing the game i'm gonna try and do some towers maybe i'll go through the campaign one more time refreshing myself a little bit and you know choose some different paths that you know there's really no different paths just using a different character um, but, uh, yeah, so far I haven't been uh, pleased with the game. You unlock a lot of things through these like loot crates that you get on Shang Tsung's Island. Um, and they really aren't fair at all. Uh, and they also, it's just a very strange area. You, you're in third person, uh, you're opening chests and you're getting random things out of them. Some things require some thought put into them to get to access them. You get weapons and stuff in there so you can unlock special things and break down walls and stuff like that. It's just all in all, I'm just, I'm a little down in the dumps about Mortal Kombat 11 right now. I'm going to try playing it some more after I get done with a little bit of Days Gone. Uh, get back, you know, take a little bit of a break from Mortal Kombat and get back to it. Um, all in all, uh, still not a, a bad game. I think the fighting's still on point. The graphics are still amazing. The fatalities are still pretty brutal. Um, I, I like the character roster for what it is. I just, I'm missing one character that should have been in the game and he wasn't, uh, and that is Sector. So, uh, spoilers, we're done with spoilers. Spoilers are done. Let's get into some news. Let's get into some bunny once told me the 3DS was gonna stop getting first party releases. And that was Nintendo. Nintendo says that it has nothing new to announce for the 3DS in terms of first party games. Um... And they said that we can confirm that there is new software coming from third-party publishers, but not from Nintendo themselves. In the latest f fiscal financial briefing, there was no mention of future games on the 3DS and no mention of further support. Even though Mario Kart 7 is still selling in <laughs> really well for the system, they, they've gotten 1.21 million units um, sold over the last fiscal year, so that's pretty good. Um, what else to say about this? I don't know. I think I think this is the end of the handheld era for the 3DS. I think the Switch is going to take over both markets for Nintendo. Um, they like they may put out like a Switch Mini for people who are more so on the go. But I think now after after all this has been said, I think that it is officially the end of the 3DS era for Nintendo support. I'm sure it'll still get uh, third-party games, but for now, not much else. Uh, Katana Zero, which is a game that is kind of like um, Hotline Miami or something like that, except you're a ninja. Uh, Katana Zero sold more than 100,000 copies in its first week, and it's the second fastest-selling game from Devolver, Devolver Digital on the Switch. The first fastest-selling game was Enter the Gungeon. Um, so the publisher said on Twitter, shout out to uh, Ask is Soft, uh, I think is the developer. Katana Zero is our second fastest selling Nintendo Switch game behind Enter the Gungeon. They're thrilled for the dev team and thankful for the support of Nintendo America and Nintendo of Europe. If you want to get this game, it is out right now. It's $15. It is a pretty decent game. I really enjoyed it myself. Um... The developer also mentioned that it is now working on free DLC for the game, including a speedrun mode. And so we also found out that uh, Devolver Digital's most pre-order ga game is now Katana Zero, surpassing other ones like The Messenger, Minute, and Downwell. So if you want to check out this game, definitely check out a review first. Uh, it's it's kind of like my Hotline Miami, so if you don't like those kind of games, this might not be the one for you, but it does incorporate stealth options and stuff like that, so check it out. 
Um, also, 9.8 million Switch owners have signed up for the online service, and 2 million of them have played Tetris 99 at the meeting. Uh, Nintendo has confirmed that the online service is selling well, and Tetris is one of the most played games on the Switch right now. They're still trying to improve the service so that more people will want to play on it. Um, definitely improve Smash Brothers, Nintendo. If you're listening right now, the online servers are complete ass. Uh, speaking of Smash Brothers, Smash Brothers Ultimate surpassed the Wii U's lifetime console sales with 13.81 million copies of the game sold. Just below that is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee at 10 million 60, 10 million point, 63 million units sold. Combined, Mario Party, uh, Super Mario Party has 6.4 million, and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still up there with 7.47 million copies of the game sold. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2 is finally gonna ha- finally has a launch date for the Switch. It's gonna be out on the 20th of June. If you live in Europe, you can get a free stylus with your pre-order. Um, this is cool. It's coming out soon. I'm, I appreciate that. That's in two months. Oh, pretty much two months from today. This is pretty amazing. Uh, I'm really excited for this because I haven't played Super Mario Maker since the Wii U version. And I stopped playing that when I sold my Wii U because I had nothing I really wanted to play on there anymore. Um, this is cool. This is cool. I'm, I'm, a lot of people are excited for this game, including myself. Uh, it definitely looks like an improvement from Super Mario Maker 1. Uh, we'll see how it goes and we'll probably get some more gameplay and footage as the days get closer, we're going to see what why Luigi is on the cover. Is there going to be a special thing for Luigi in this game? We'll wait and see. All right, so Kansas Kansas City Chiefs quarterback Patrick Mahomes is going to be on the cover for Madden NFL 20. Uh, the super deluxe version of the game is called the Showtime Edition because his nickname was Showtime Mahomes. He was one of the best quarterbacks of last year. He didn't play his best in the the playoffs against the against the Patriots. I think if he had played a little bit better, they could have won that game. Um, but he was a great quarterback last year. He is um, definitely deserving of the spot of the cover for it. Uh, he's very popular. Showtime Mahomes. He'll be known as that for probably his entire career now. Uh, he has the famous no look passing, so maybe they're gonna add that into Madden. I'm sure that's gonna go over well. I haven't played a Madden game since Madden 18, so um, am I gonna get this one? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Probably not. Bloodborne, the board game, has reached its Kickstarter goal without much of a hassle. They wanted two hundred thousand dollars, and they got it in less than twenty minutes, with the total being 1.6 million at the time of this article being released. The game itself lets one of four hunters explore the city of Yarmin, where they encounter familiar enemies and bosses on their quest. Detailed miniatures depict regular enemy types as well as bosses such as Father Gascon, Vicar Amelia, and the Cleric Beast. You'll use a card-based combat system to cleave your way through your foes in four different campaigns, each apparently taking between 60 and 90 minutes to complete. Sounds kind of like the God of War board game, to be honest with you. Uh, this might be a little bit more interesting, or a little bit more people may be more interested in this, uh, seeing as Bloodborne is still a huge phenomenon, still a huge game. Um, and it's supposed to come out around May 2020, and if you put down a $100 pledge, you got a copy of the game for that. Hopefully the game is not going to be $100 just to buy. (laughs) And finally, we got Fartnite. Oh, boy. Fartnite Endgame uh, event is starting today on the PS4. It's going to add a limited time mode and new weapons. So in this mode, it kind of seems like the regular save the world mode. You're going to hold off against the um, Thanos and his... Shatari army. I can't say that word. Uh, their job is to seize all of the six infinity stones that you are sworn to protect. Um, the protectors will have special weapons, including um, a Sh- Captain America shield, Thor's hammer, and I believe Iron Man's gauntlets are also going to be in the game. Um, so yeah, cool thing for Fortnite players if you are into that kind of thing. Um, hey, Mr. Predicto, uh, Jesus Christ, will Fortnite just end... is yes oh maybe this is the end game maybe this is the end for Fortnite. we'll see 
All right, so I am going to do my duty and shrink on down to miniature size because I have Iovio Gaming, a.k.a. The Game Box, a.k.a. Nathan, coming onto the show to talk about next year's or next month's games. Jesus Christ, Jimmy, the year's gone so fast. So thank you again for listening, and if you want to stick around for that, it's starting right about... Hey, and now we are here live, well, not really live, recorded with ya boy, the Game Box, a.k.a. Nathan, a.k.a. Iovio Gaming. What is going on, my dude? I am doing pretty well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'll tell you one thing. Mm-hmm. I just had my mic on mute. Ooh. It's not on mute now. It's fine. You just don't have a hello from me. Hello, everybody. Yeah, well, I'll edit the hello in before that, and then we'll... <laughs> it's all good. It's I, all put good. It, I put it on mute, and then I put it off mute, and then back on mute, thinking I was taking it off of mute. Well, hey, we're here. We got you here. You're not muted. We're good. <laughs> So, I, I, one of the Iovio is here. He's going to talk about May 2019 video game release, releases with me because his channel has actually done a 180, flipped around, uh, spun around on his heels, and it's, he's he's putting out different content than he was before. And he's talking mainly about video game releases, PlayStation Plus releases, games with gold, etc., etc., those kind of things. So I thought it'd be a good idea to get him on here in his wealth of knowledge as a video game connoisseur. No, knowledge, and, yes, yes. <laughs> and talk All about... of the knowledge. So uh, what, first things first, it's it's on everyone's minds right now. Why the name change? Why the format change? And what's going to happen to all your old series? Um. Well, I've taken all of the old series off at the moment. Don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll put them back up. It, it, maybe I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I, I I didn't have enough time to keep playing games all of the time, constantly to keep videos coming out. And I thought, well, let's try something different. And I thought I'd go down the scripted route where I'd kind of write something out. And I've enjoyed doing it. So I thought, let's stick with that. And that's pretty it, much it. The name what? change, I don't know, I just, I thought it was more of a, like a a personal thing with, um, with like my gamer tag, and I thought, I don't want that if I'm going to do videos like this. Plus if everyone who sense. comes to the channel is like, what's E-O-V-I-O? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was another one. That was another one. I like the change. I think it's a good change. Um, I, Thank I, you. you. Know, I, like, I like your format now. Uh, I, I still want more emotes. That's... <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> I've <laughs> but <clears throat> I've made but they a new are hat. really well done. They are really well done, and uh, they they do present a lot of information. Thank in, you. In like a, in a in a short amount of time. I try my best. I do try my best. I've made a new hat. I've made some t-shirts. Oh, I, nice. I, I'm waiting for them to come, and then I will take a huge load of photographs just for you, <laughs> only you, <laughs> Yemi, well, and thank then you. and then I'll have more for each one. Is the the problem is. It, it, I'm doing a video and I'm wearing a different outfit, and I'm gonna take the whole load of out, or I gotta get changed, and I just can't be asked with that. Well, hey, uh, let's talk about the games coming out in May of 2019. You have a little list here for us to talk I about. I do. What's well, I've, first? I've got a big list. Oh, um, big list. Oh yes, it's really big. It's full of crap, if I'm honest. Uh, and I've <laughs> picked a couple that I like the look off out of it. Um, obviously, the big one for people with a Switch is going to be Mortal Kombat coming to the Switch, seeing as that came out uh, April. So that's either last month or this month, depending on what day you upload this video. <laughs> it's going to be uh, it's going to be on the weekend, so it's it's still going to be in April. Oh, there we go then. Yes, yeah, so they're going to they're going to be able to get their hands on that, which I know a lot of people have been enjoying. Um, the big game itself that I think is probably the the main one that people are going to be buying this month is Rage 2, first person shooter, Hell sequel yeah. to Rage 1, <laughs> but uh, that looks really good, um, I've looked at some videos of it online and I've, you know, I've, I've got bits of info up, like the, the things you need to know, things that you can, you can get on, on the internet to have a little look at, and it looks like they've spent a lot of time with this new open world that they're they're doing and hopefully it's not too empty yeah i'm glad that they kind of kept like the the rage style like you don't have like um you know 
Like, uh, you know, a bo- I love Borderlands, but you have, like, 50 million guns in Borderlands. Well, in yes. Rage, you have, like, a set number of guns in the rocket launcher and whatever else they've shown off so far. It doesn't seem like they have, like, random guns popping up everywhere. You use no. your one with gun. It's kind of like Same Doom. game kinda with like a different Doom. name. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, I think Rage 1 was, I think people would, I don't, I, don't, I didn't play Rage 1, if I'm honest with you, but people were I loved saying Rage that they 1. tried to it, compare it with, with kind of, like, the Doom games and it just didn't work for the style of it. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like the the engine that they used. Yeah, I thought Rage One was a competent game. It's definitely mm-hmm. underrated, in my opinion. Um, the story is a little strange, but um, I think for the most part, the game really does what they were trying to do, and that's well, in a post-apocalyptic crazy. A post-apocalyptic world. crazy world game needs a stupid, weird story to go along. And in this with one, you get a crazy it? post-apocalyptic crazy car. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Mad Max. <laughs> that's what we're gonna think- be. How do you think the combat's going to be in it? Because it looks pretty flowing in the trailers, but I watched a PlayStation guy play it. And yeah. I think, he, I think he was mostly just trash and playing video games. <laughs> it could possibly be. <laughs> what what I've seen with the trailers and everything, it reminds me of um, Apex, like the movement. It, mm. it reminds me of how Apex is now currently. So I think it's going to be good. Um, I like the fact that, you know, you, you've got a set character that you can play as, but you can customize them by changing the you know, gender and their looks and all yeah. that good stuff. So, uh, it's. I think it's going to be good, if I'm totally honest with you. I think it's going to be a good shout to, to stick it. Plus, it's Bethesda, and, you know, I know they've had a bit of a crappy run the last few years, but most of the games they've released have been pretty excellent. What do you think is going to be better, Rage 2 or Doom Eternal? Oh, Doom. <laughs> I, I yeah. think Doom. Yeah. <laughs> I'll still totally get Rage 2 because I'm a fan of the series. Oh, yeah. Series, well, in quotation marks. I'm, I'm going to buy it um, anyway because it looks good and I like the look of it. And I'll, I'll probably go out the week before and buy Rage 1 and just play through that. So I've got an idea of what I'm playing when I get into it. Um, Hell yeah. I th- if I'm honest, though, the next week or so is going to be Days Gone. Yep, same here. I, I've, I went and bought it earlier, I've played it for a bit, and then you were like, you've got to do the video with me now, and I was like, okay, no more gameplay. I owe you, you better get on this video right now. <laughs> um, other than that, there's a, there's a couple of, um, I've never even heard of them, I don't know if you would have heard of them, um, there's a game called Dragon. Uh they all seem to be, they're kind of like horror games, or like thriller games, okay. really story, story driven things. Um, this one looks quite good. I like the art style of it. Other than that, I haven't really looked too much into it, but it's really pretty looking, and I, I'd probably say it's 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 going to be one to check out. Whether or not I'd say definitely go out and buy it is another thing, but <laughs> I'd look at it. Um, look at it. Look at it with your eyes, with your yeah. elvish eyes. Yes, and then there's another one. Again, I didn't even hear of it before before this month. Plague Tale Innocence. Which again looks really pretty. It's a survival puzzle kind of game um, about the plague, really. Looks, if you want to put it that way. There's loads of rats, hungry rats. Oh, nom oh, nom good. nom. Good. You know how yes. much I love rats. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one. It, it's it's kind of like um, it's a puzzle game, and you you ba- basically you, you you send these rats to attack. The people that are after you is my oh. understanding of it. Okay. But you do puzzles to, to do that. It's really weird. But it again, it looks really pretty. Yeah, and it does. I based probably 90% of my shall I buy this game on. <laughs> oh, look, it looks really pretty. Kind Other like than... A, kind of like a demented Pied Piper. Yeah, yeah. That's... that's it's, it, I think it's... um. So, uh, from the the story trailer that I watched, there's a little boy, and then they're trying to get this boy, and then you're with his sister, and they're trying to run away, and his dad dies, and, mm-hmm. and then she's got the power of the rats or something, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> That'd she be can... my go-to superpower. Yeah, yeah. The power the of the power... rats. <laughs> I have the power of the rats. <laughs> there is actually um, a Batman villain named a Rat Catcher, who literally all he does is send rats at people. Um, I love Batman, and I've never heard easily. of the Rat Catcher before. <laughs> I need to find up. this guy. I'm going to look him yeah. up now. He, he makes um, he's like he's not really a cameo appearances in the Batman Arkham games, but he has like those Riddler things where you can just like 
you know, do the Riddler thing on him, and he'll you'll get some backstory on him from those games. Other than oh, that, he, he looks cool as shit. He's got yeah. a little stick with a thing on the end for the rats to fall. Oh, wow. I like him. He's my new favorite supervillain. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Definitely. <laughs> Everyone mark that down? No. The rat catcher. <laughs> the Definitely. rat catcher. Coming anyway, soon. yeah, play, play Innocence. We got a bit off topic. Um, <laughs> well, it, it's all in the realm of rats. It, it, okay. Well, yeah, rat games, rat people, rat men, rat everything. Speaking of rat people, Ratatouille, you like that? I, I, actually, that's one of my favorite Pixar movies. Oh, oh look at that. I listened to Yen many times. Where's that, Dis, where's that Disney? Yeah, it Pixar? was one of those two. Was it Pixar? All right. I think it's Pixar. I don't bloody know. I, I, I just like Ratatouille because It's an animated rat. Remy, Remy sounds like Yemi, and, you know, it's a, it's a great character. It's the, that, that, look, see there, you like that film because Remy sa sounds like Yemi. It's just as good as me liking games because they look like they're going to look pretty. <laughs> there you go. It, it, just, it all runs full circle around yeah, exactly. here. Exactly, see? <laughs> <laughs> um, this game, though, um, Plague Innocence, I, I, I definitely say again, it's one worth looking at. Uh, you, I think you control the girl, and then you've got to protect a little younger brother. Yeah, that's what it looks like so, from the screenshots. Yeah. It looks like it's in the perspective of a third-person perspective of the girl. I'm not going to try and say her name, but the brother's <laughs> called Hugo. Her name starts oh, just with like, just an like A. Movie. <laughs> just like the movie. Just like the movie. Oh, Jesus. But it's all about the Black Death, like the plague. Yeah. So, hence the name, the Plague Innocence Tales. Yeah stuff another one play anything like uh dishonored There's um lots of rats in that one well yeah well there are isn't there yeah no it's <laughs> a, again i think it's going to be more of um do you know what i think it's going to be like you know when you do the puzzles in uncharted mm -hmm. I, I think you're going to have like rooms where you gotta that's what i'm kind of looking at it as but it looked like uh, what was that king Kim, kingdom come deliverance Oh, like the faces yeah. reminded me of that when I saw the trailer of it. So hmm. we'll see. It, it does Hopefully look... it's better than that game, but uh, well, that's, I, a, that's a topic again, for a different time. That was that was one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I need to buy this. It looks amazing. And then the reviews came out and I was like, I'm not spending 50 pounds on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I still don't own it. <laughs> I owned it for uh, about two months, played it, beat it. And I was like, yeah, this wasn't worth it. <laughs> this is not for me. Not at all. Sorry, I was having some whiskey, as everybody's oh, been able to hey, see. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> Weekday whiskey. <laughs> Woohoo! Um, uh, the podcast is really taxing. Sometimes I need to chug a bottle of vodka before I start. <laughs> Just before you start. I've got water yep. as well. I have got water as well. Are you it's sure quite there's hot water? It says still, nat still natural water from, from Asda or Walmart. Infused Walmart with the diamonds, right? Uh, no, but it's, it's, it's sourced and bottled in Cumbria. Games. Team yeah. Sonic Racing. Next game. <laughs> Team Sonic Racing. Now, I hate Sonic. I've never well, been a huge fan of it, but it's a kart racer. You can't not like a kart racer. Well, here's the problem I have with this game, Iovio, and maybe uh, Nathan, Iovio, whichever you want to be called. Um, why, Anything you want. Why you can does call the me fastest... Femi the Pheasant if you want. <laughs> I'm just asking, why is the fastest rodent in the video game universe need to drive a vehicle well, so we can go twice as fast obviously <laughs> but how, how can you create a vehicle to go faster than sonic it's the car of light it goes <laughs> as fast as the speed of light instead of the <laughs> faster the speed of sound like sonic it's actually like the Flintstones. He's actually running his feet underneath the oh, car oh yeah that could be it none of them have engines it's just <laughs> yeah. it's just pedal carts go <laughs> it, it looks like it's going to be quite fun. Um, you know, you can customize your vehicles on it, can't you? And there's 15 characters from Sonic. I know about four characters from Sonic myself. But... Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> there's the girl one. There's a green one and an orange one. Tails. One. I know yeah. tails. Tails. Yeah, tails. Tails. Yeah, tails. <laughs> Knuckles and Sonic. That's my guys. And Eggman. Don't about Professor. Yeah, there you go. Eggman. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Eggplant. It looks he's good. Actually, he's um, being played by Jim Carrey in the movie. This is a Sonic movie? Yeah, you haven't seen the poster for... Okay, no? look up the poster for the Sonic movie 2019. Right. Let's have a look at this. Bye bye, Ratman. Sonic movie. <laughs> You're going to be a little bit more disappointed than Ratcatcher. 
Load. Images. Oh, God. <laughs> Re is that real? It's real. It is It is real. Poster. Let's just make sure I'm on the right thing. There's there's two different posters. There's a teaser one, and there's one where he's, like, lounging, on, and he's by, uh, it kind of looks like um, Star-Lord, whatever his name is. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he looks awful. <laughs> oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> that need that that needs to be cancelled. <laughs> I could I couldn't sit there for an hour and a half and look at that. Well, uh, the anyways, text uh... the, the text at the top of that thing it says "fast friends." Yep. Yeah, that yeah. is the Fast and Furious text. Yes, it it really is. I think it was that no, is I, the Fast and Furious text. Well, the, you know, Sonic is fast. fast. Friend, oh, if if Dwayne the Rock Johnson appears in this movie, oh, it no, might no, be, yes, it well, might I'll be, be the happy greatest then. movie. Ever. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just like Shaquille O'Neal's in every commercial in America, Dwayne the Rock Johnson needs to be in every movie that comes he's, in yes, America. Yes, he's the best person <laughs> in the world ever. He's great. <laughs> this Sonic, back to the game. The Sonic yes. game, I think will, <laughs> I think is going to tide people over until June. June? It is June, isn't it? When Crash Team Racing comes out. Because mm -hmm. that's going to be my life for the summer. I don't care about any of these new games and story games. It's Crash and only Crash. Well, just like with World War Z coming out before Days Gone, I think they're releasing Sonic Team Racing before the Crash Team Racing comes out because... You know, the hype is there. You know, if, if they release those on the same day, of, you know, everyone's going to buy Crash. No one's going to buy Sonic. Cause exactly. Like, just like the World, yeah. World War Z game, everybody would have bought Days Gone. I have bought Days Gone. Me too. I got mm. both games, actually. I have, I have World War Z I, and uh, Days Gone. I know. Gone. Well, you told me that's really good as well, didn't you? And from what I've seen, I think it's, it's really good looking. It's fairly so. good. I, I think that it doesn't have enough content to warrant... I mean, the price tag isn't bad. It's only $40 here, which would probably be about, what, 30 over there. I, I'm sure um, it'll still be 50 quid over here. They, they yeah. like to just charge us <laughs> too much for things. But I think, uh, it, I think it's a competent game. It's like Left 4 Dead, except... You know, there's mobs, zombies, and it's more realistic, I guess you would say. But I don't mm. think it has like enough content to hold you over. That's why. That's why they probably released it before Days Gone, so everyone can get, can get their zombie fix, and then they, they get the real zombie fix. <laughs> the real zombie. Fi well, I've been playing. Like I said, I've been playing it, and uh, I burp it now because of my stupid whiskey. The um, <laughs> when I played uh, The Last of Us, it kind of like pushes you through. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You kind of know where you're going. You get a bit lost every now and again, but it, the time that I've played this now, which is probably an hour and a half, two hours, it's very big, is what I found. And I, we, I didn't really know... Can you on that? It's very oh, well, big. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know where I was going as much. I didn't seem to have enough direction. For myself. Not necessarily for everybody. But... It's going to take me a bit of time to get into it, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Whereas the other one, it was kind of like, go here, look at all the stuff, wah! <laughs> and the last game that I sat down and actually played recently was God of War. So I'm like, God of War, any other game, they've got to compare to that now. Mm -hmm. Which is quite hard, because it's been amazing, that game was. <laughs> it, was it was my game of the year last year. That, that game it was, was so good. So it's good. bellissimo. The other games that we've got, we've got one called For the King, which is coming out for the PlayStation, I believe. For the King? Yeah, and it it's like cartoony looking. It looks quite cool. Oh, I love these kind of graphics. Yeah, I like the again, all based on the graphics. I think it looks really good. <laughs> yeah, it probably kind of going to be pants. <laughs> it's a turn. It's an RPG. Uh, yeah. Tactical game. Name, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a single. Or multiplayer RPG tactical thing. Again, I, that's not even my type of game. I hate the, the turn-based games, but it looks really pretty, so I, I'm probably going to have a go at it. Kind of, the gameplay kind of looks like um, like Advanced Wars or Fire Emblem or something like that, where you meet someone on the battlefield and then you fight yeah. them in like this mini-battle. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Exactly. I'm going to definitely look into this one. It's it, Again, the art style's got it for me, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else have I got here? Oh, right. I told you earlier, didn't I? Game called Close to the Sun. 
Is it based so, on uh, Greek mythology? No, no. It's <laughs> a first-person horror game. Oh. So people like Ion Prime might like it. But Minecraft it's got Prime? Minecraft Prime, yeah. <laughs> bring back bring back Minecraft Prime. We've got um it's it, it, looking at it, it looks like BioShock basically. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I've watched like interviews of the guy that made it and he's like it's not inspired by BioShock and it definitely was. Yeah. <laughs> um but it's it's something to do with Nikola Tesla's vision um of some Helios thing. I am gonna really got a clue. Um but it's all like dim and underwater looky. It looks really cool. Again, art. That's all I care about. As long as it looks cool, I'll happily buy it. But yeah, it, 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 it even looks, the font style for like the title looks like a Bioshock font. It, it it really really looks like Bioshock to me, and I can't see anything other than Bioshock when I'm looking at it. And well, I friggin' love Bioshock. So if it pl <laughs> if it plays anything like Bioshock, I'll be extremely happy. <clears throat> Any information whether if 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 this is gonna be like a you can't defend yourself type game, kind of like I th a Outlast? Uh, yeah, like I that? yeah, I think it is. Um, which is a problem, but uh, well, I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. Outlast, yeah. you, you know, a lot of people like that. I didn't because I couldn't defend myself. Um, <laughs> grab, this grab is like yeah. A there's no knife or yeah, something. Jesus Christ. There's no there's no weapons. Um, again, it's problem solving and following the story. There's not. <laughs> It's not going to be shoot your way out of everything sort of game and action, action, action. It's, I think it's going to be a lot of, oh crap, look at this thing coming, hide away, don't, 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 don't let it see you sort of stuff. But again, it, you know, if you like it, that sort of gameplay, it, it, it'll do it for you. And the art style is very different to any other game that is released like that. So mm -hmm. it might make it feel fresh, even though it's it's going to be similar gameplay. I, I like I the look like of the gameplay. Yeah. I like the guy telling me that it's not inspired by Bioshock, so it's one for me to buy for sure. It's reverse psychology. He says it's not because it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, be I bet there's going to be a lot of um, raggy moments in this game. <laughs> Quite possible. Quite Do you possible. think the Scooby-Doo crew would last in this game? Yeah, but they could last anyway. <laughs> they could last anyway. They they were on Escape from Zombie Island or whatever it was called. They they were real zombies in that movie. I remember real that. zombies. <laughs> that movie when I was a kid scared the absolute pants off of me. I couldn't sleep after watching it because <laughs> they were real zombies. There wasn't a man in a mask. They were real zombies. That was the, that was the whole thing of it. Like the yeah. first zombie they try to unmask, Fred pulls his head off like exactly. a fatality. Exactly. <laughs> it's. I think they would make it. They would be fine, especially Velma. She's the best. <laughs> I think Iovio has a crush on Velma. Maybe. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, um, any other games that go well, over Iovio? There's, 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 there's plenty. You know, it depends on what you want to talk about. There's, well, let's there's... let's go with one more game and uh, oh, make it. Right, make let's it have a, a look at this. A good one. A... I can't now. We've used the good ones. Oh. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Let's have a little look. There's a game called Pathologic 2, which I like the look of. I'd say look at that one. Total War Three Kingdoms is out. I, again, that's not for me, but some people might like it. Um, where are we? Oh, there's loads of Resident Evil games coming out for uh, the Switch. The Resident oh, yeah, Evil Remake right. Zero and 4 are all coming on there. They get on Assassin's Creed 3, which people hate. That's that's good. <laughs> it was well, one year. Ah, Life is Strange the, 2. Have you seen they the side-to-side -side comparisons of Assassin's Creed 3? Because it's literally a downgrade in the remaster. Yeah, it yeah it it, it doesn't look any better, does it? It's not. No. It's just for money. That's all it is. Yeah, Again, well, I'm not going to buy it. I've got it for my PlayStation Three. Why do I need right. to buy it? Yeah. But the people that have Switches might not own it. Mm -hmm. There you go. And you can play okay. it on the go. Who wants yeah. to stab? Oh, well, uh, exactly. Stab those red coats on the go. Well, you can play as boring Connor. And you can play as amazing Haytham Kenway, the best character in Assassin's Creed ever. Ooh, I loved him. Pretty I love no, I love him. He's amazing. He's brilliant, and he's like super British. He's like, oh, chapos, hey, <laughs> it's great. It's perfect. Um, last game, Life is Strange okay. Two, Episode Three. That's that's two, three. That's out on the 9th of May. People like those, don't they? I, I think so, but yeah. I, I call that series uh, Life is Cringe myself. Mm. 
I've seen a lot of people play it on the internets, and a lot of people say, I love these games. I've watched the playthroughs. I've never played. I own it. Life is mm -hmm. Strange, the first one. I don't know the new one yet. I'm going to wait for all of them to come out, and I'll just buy it as one box yeah, set. Yeah, I usually do. Like yeah. I did with this this other one. I've not played it again, like I said, but I watched people like Lukey, Luke, uh, Lukey, Lukey Lugs play it. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I, th I thought it was, you know, it's the gameplay looks boring as tits but the story <laughs> is it, it, it's it's quite engaging i that's that's what got me with it i, I couldn't mm -hmm. walk around really slowly all the time as long as you can run that's all that matters is really in these games i don't know where you gone Still <laughs> all right well hey uh iovio aka the game box thanks for coming on the podcast and talking new games with me and other things we had a good time yes but uh there's one more thing that we must do because it's oh, a no. running gag on the show to ask mr predicto a yes or no question do you have a question for mr do predicto? i have a question for mr predicto Ooh. i'm gonna ask him a question about one of these games all right let's have a little look Oh, we'll go with Rage 2. Is Rage 2 going to suck, Mr. Predicto? All right, here we go. Mr. Predicto, Rage 2. Will it suck? Bollocks. The answer you seek is yes. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, with it. Well, there we go. Right, now that's a ro raggy what, scrap moment. Scrap what we said. Scrap what we said. <laughs> uh, edit that whole part out. Uh, <laughs> Just take it out. We don't need it. It's going to suck, Mr. Predicto said. Mr. Predicto uh, is God. <laughs> All right, Iovio, where can people find you? Over on my channel, which is on YouTube. I've got a Twitter, a Facebook, and an Instagram. And they're Links all... Links will be in below. In the description the below. The Game Box, I missed not the, I missed Iovio. The <laughs> Yes, right. they're all the game yes. box. We call him Iovio because that's the that's the uh, first name we know him as. And my game attack. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be tough switching over to the Nathan, but Nathan. I'll, I'll get there eventually. You could pull, call me call me God if you wanted to. I'm good with that one. I like that. Did you just say God? Call you God? God. Yeah, call me <laughs> Mr. God. Mr. Oh, yes. Mr. God. Mr. God is my father, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all out of whiskey uh, now as well. Oh. Uh, I, knew, I knew the podcast would take its toll. <laughs> <laughs> all right nathan aka the game box aka iovio thank you for coming on once more all your thank links you for having down me in the description and hey have a great day thanks for coming and by peace and that does it for this episode of yemi cast a video game podcast once again thank you for listening watching on whatever platform you're watching or listening on spotify youtube soundcloud itunes whatever you want um, if you want to, you can check out my album, which is out now on YouTube, called Mark One by Space Ferret, and you can check that out if you want. And other than that, nothing else to really say except for, thank you for listening, I am your host, Yemi the Ferret, and this has been YemiCast, a video game podcast.